Hello and welcome to Rank Advertiser Podcast. My name is Glory, your host today. And uh, today we, we have Beth. We're going to be talking about the four agreement and uh, to be impeccable in terms of keeping your word. So today we're going to be developing on this amazing topic. But before we get started, I'd like to let you know a little bit about uh, what the podcast is about. For those of you who are new, it's your first time here. Um, the podcast, it's all about uh, inspiring, enlightening, and empowering every single listener today. That is our mission. And for those of you who just jumped in right now while listening, make sure to share the podcast. Make sure to share right now. Invite people so they are going to receive this beautiful message that we have for them today. So without further ado, in the next minute, I'm going to introduce uh, Beth for us in a minute here. Okay, okay, welcome back. So let let me introduce our guest today. It's going to be Beth. Uh, she is uh, a woman who is an expert in marketing and advertising, and uh, she has been an independent entrepreneur for 13 years, and she has helped others succeed by building a global network of consumer online. She currently leads a team of over 19,000 people, in uh, seven countries. She is passionate about teaching anyone willing to learn and work to master the new way. And that's why her uh, team is called, her company is called Team Dream Extreme. So she is also a passionate advocate of uh, preventive healthcare strategy and it's a national spoke women for Women Heart, which is an organization that uh, help women with uh, heart disease. She's an active Rotarian and past president of her Rotary Club, an ambassador for the National Cancer Coalition, and an athlete addicted to tennis and her pilot and bike. She believes everything in her life has led her to this place, and she's on a mission to support as many people as possible to have the type of success that she enjoyed. She's been happily married for 35 years to her childhood sweetheart, Dave. Uh, she has two wonderful uh, children, Erica, who's 27, and Kyle, who's 25 years old. Without further ado, I bring my guest today, Beth. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much, Lori. I'm just so thrilled to be here. It's, uh, I was just really rocking out to that music too, man. I'm telling you what, that's some really good music. Um, we're just excited to be able to share, as Lori said, um, the message of um, not only hope, but also what it's like to be an entrepreneur out there right now. Um, there's been a lot of things in our country and in the world, especially in this last year and a half, that um, have been interesting opportunities as well as um, provided some interesting challenges as well. And so we, we're going to start in on um, the truth, right? I mean, what is that? It, it seems like that's gotten a little bit muddy sometimes. Um, and so I've always loved the book called The Four Agreements. It really just takes four critical things that are so important, particularly for an entrepreneur, that it's all about the development of that mindset, right? Mm -hmm. And building trust with your consumers, with your partners, with the people who are going to join you in whatever endeavor you happen to be engaged in. Um, but particularly as an entrepreneur, people are wanting to do business with you. They are wanting to do business with who you are, how you show up. And so it's really important that number one, you're clear about that. Uh, and number two, that there is a working guideline available to you to just kind of help provide some of those elements that are about character. And because trust is such an important thing and because there's so much skepticism out there, oh my gosh, it's like so many of the people that I run into, um, you know, they're immediately skeptical. 
Well, we've been sort of trained to do that. Um, and we've been conditioned that unfortunately there are people who are out there who are wanting to do business who are not as upfront as we would certainly like for them to be. Um, there are also things that, you know, in our society that are demonstrating that lack of truth has somehow become sort of the norm. So that's what we're going to be focusing on today. And as Gloria was suggesting, the first element or the first agreement is to be impeccable with your word. And that means a whole bunch of different things to a whole bunch of people. Um, but in this book, impeccable with your word means that when you give your word, when you tell someone that you're going to either do something at a certain time or you're going to do make some kind of a, um, a gesture that you have committed to, it's really about honoring the word that you're giving. Because when you honor your word and people can rely on you and they know that you have their best interest in their heart, they're going to love to do business with you because they know that they can count on you to be there for them. Perfect. That, that is an amazing introduction. And for, those of, for, for people who are out there are wondering, uh, what does it mean to be impeccable? Does it mean that uh, if you say something, uh, you go after it? And how about the people who are, who are wondering at is, is, is the same time, you know, they've been telling people uh, things and sometimes they come short out of those, uh, those uh, uh, words. So what would, what would be your thought in terms of uh, impeccability in those two medium? How would you characterize it or what's your understanding of it? Yeah, so um, it, from the way I conduct my, my life and my business, um, it, it's really about speaking with integrity. So if I'm going to commit that I'm going to do something, I'm going to be really clear about if I can't do it at a certain time, then I'm going to let people know that. It, it's just the ability to know that someone is there for you. And when they say they're going to do something, you can count on their doing exactly what they say they're going to do. Um, it's also about recognizing that um, when we say something, when we agree to something, and then it doesn't happen, it, it has a tendency to undermine the ability for people to have trust in us. Mm -hmm. So I think of it just about integrity, right? It, that it's, it really is so important, and, and particularly as an entrepreneur, uh -huh. um, but in business in general. So it, for me, it, it really is synonymous with integrity. Did that answer your question, Glory? Because it was a great question. Oh, yes, it, 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 okay. it did. Okay, and good. and uh, as we were talking about the, uh, the four, the four uh, agreement, and on your first agreement, uh, what is the most important of the four in, in, in an essence? Because we have four, and in terms of priority, what would you say is the most important? If people get it right, things should be good. Well, I'll tell you what, that's such a great question because <laughs> while tr having trust is essential, right? Because you don't have a relationship if you don't have trust. And for me, I'm giving trust until someone demonstrates to me that they're not worthy of that trust, right? And that takes a lot of things and it takes a long time because I just choose to trust people off the bat. Other people, they won't do that, right? They'll choose to withhold their willingness to trust in other people until they demonstrate to them over time that that is something that, that they have earned. And so I think it really depends on, you know, how you want to choose to see that. But of the four agreements, so the other ones that we're going to be talking about, don't take anything personally, don't make any assumptions, mm -hmm. and always do your best. For me personally, trust is the foundation of everything else. So it's incredibly important. The hardest one for me personally was to not take things personally. So I think it just kind of depends on who you are. All four of them are critically important. But for me, not taking no's personally was a really hard thing to get over because it's natural, it's human. When people say no, you know, at first, this was years ago now, but at first I was, I was taking that personally. It was like, oh my gosh, they're saying no to me. 
And they're not actually saying no to me. They're either saying no because they don't have enough information or mm -hmm. they're saying no because it's not the right time for them. Or they're saying no because frankly, it, I haven't found a good way to match up a specific need with a solution that is available to offer. So that's probably the one of the four that's been personally the biggest challenge for me. Um, and that's one that we'll be talking about next week. But great question, because they all have tremendous value. But I think for each individual, when you read this book, something will pop up that'll be like, mm, that's going to be my, my biggest opportunity for growth. <laughs> for growth, yes. That's, that's a, very, a very good point. And especially right now during, during this uh, this. The, the, the COVID, I, I also wonder how does that apply because there has been people who have been uh, under contract, you know, for a year, two year, that, you know, an employer taught them, that, you know, you know that you sign a contract for four years or three years and then COVID hit and now they're out of a job. Would you consider that also part of a breach of an agreement, uh, employers not being um, impeccable with their words? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, it's a really tough decision, I would assume, for people with integrity. If they have a contract, and, and that contract is a binding contract, and it, you know, it, unfortunately, no one could have possibly have predicted what was going to happen when COVID hit. Um, but if there's a contract that someone has agreed to, and then they're breaching that contract, regardless of the circumstances, there there is going to be a need for some kind of equalizing of that reality, whether there's an extension that can be made on the other end of that agreement or, or whatnot. Um, but contractors out there who are under you know, an agreement that is a legally binding agreement, absolutely. They need to be able to be honored regardless of the circumstances. So I think there's always room for how we as a society can work with each other, work with organizations that have extended contracts to us. And, you know, it, what we'd love to be able to avoid is some kind of a legally contentious disagreement um, because there's certainly enough of those going on around us. It's really about finding a way through a situation like that one. And frankly, if you've had a contract that, you know, has um, been challenged because of COVID, there are other options available uh, in terms of generating an additional stream of income as well. So lots of choice, I think, as well, that's important for people to recognize when that kind of a very disappointing situation can come up. Perfect. That's, 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 uh, that's, that's very, very, very important, uh, especially a situation happen that, you know, kind of change the environment in the senses, should we still uh, keep people accountable to those words? Uh, that, 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 that's actually a good question that, that, that I'd like to, to have a little bit of your thoughts. What do you think about that, for example? Because last time I remember I was having a conversation with one of, uh, one of my friends and we were talking a little bit about, about politics and, and then he referred to something and then I told, I told him, like, the president said this and he didn't deliver that. And he was like, oh, no, we shouldn't hold him accountable. You know, it was COVID and this. So what are your thoughts? Should, if, if something changes in the environment, should people be okay with the, the expectation not being delivered? Or should they still uh, be rigid if, if the, the delivery is not, uh, has not arrived as promised? What, what are some of your thoughts as we're talking about this beautiful topic? <laughs> <laughs> and, it, you know, it, that's, the, that's the reason I'm so grateful to have an opportunity to discuss this topic because it is very far-reaching in our society right now. Uh, personally, I think that there's a whole other level of standard when it comes to the agreements that the president of our country makes to his citizens or her citizens, as it will be at some point, maybe. Um, but uh, the, certainly that, you know, when a president is saying, this is what I'm going to do, there are a lot of conditions around whether or not that's able to be accomplished. And um, certainly COVID made some of the promises challenging. Um, but I, I think in, in some ways it, it's almost, more important to think in terms of 
when a president of the United States is going to make a promise that's um, a global promise or that is, you know, keeping uh, the citizens of this country safe um, and being able to um, keep them in a position in which they have options and they have financial security, it's a really tall order. And yes, if they're going to be willing to make that kind of a commitment, and there's not a plan of exactly how to execute on that commitment, then not only is he setting himself up for a very disappointed society, um, but he's also setting himself up to be evaluated at some point down the road as um, someone who was not keeping uh, with integrity. So yeah, there, I guess there is a little bit of rigidity in this. And this is the thing that I think we maybe lost a bit of along the way is our word really isn't something to be compromised. It, if we want to be able to establish ourselves as business people, as people who are going to be respected, as people who are going to be trusted, making negotiations about our word and mm -hmm. making excuses for why something did or did not happen. And I understand, you know, COVID makes that really hard for a lot of people. There's no doubt about it. But if your original intention and your original word just simply cannot be um, continued, cannot be fulfilled, mm -hmm. then at the very least, working with whomever that word has been a little dicey because of things that are totally out of our control, like COVID, it's the conversation that needs to happen with the individual. Exactly. Be, right? Just pick up the phone and have a conversation, right? I, it's not that I'm not wanting to keep my word. These are the things that are going on in my world and for me. And negotiate what, what can happen, right? As opposed to, you know, doing what sometimes I think can happen is just making, again, we're going to talk about assumptions in week three, mm -hmm. um, but making assumptions that we know exactly what's going on in somebody's life behind the scenes. And the truth of it is we don't have a clue for most of the people we're going to do business with. And so it, it all, that's why there's four of these agreements, right? Because they all kind of intertwine with one another. Um, and, and so I, I do think that being able to honor your word is critically important. Definitely. And doing your very best. I, I totally agree with you. And, and there was why I asked that question because always once we see, we see things in a, in a narrow perspective, in a one-on-one, the that understanding does it apply to a general understanding where one person promised to millions of people if that's still that that's still binding uh despite of uh dis despite of environment changes and things and that's i, I really uh, like your answer on that and what would be the second agreement? So we talk about the first one, you know, be impeccable with your words, which is a very important thing, especially in 2021 and beyond. We really need uh, a society and people in business and in life in general who can be able to be impeccable with their words. I totally agree with you on that one. And so on the second point, what, what would be our, the next agreement? What is the next one yeah. that's important. So the, the next one is don't take anything personally. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that, that's so hard. I mean, seriously, that's the one that's really tough with me. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, and it took years before I figured out um, how to have someone say no and recognize that it, it again, it's not a reflection on me. It's really a reflection on where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. And my job is to help to figure out more about what's behind the no, mm -hmm. right? Because it was just the way I was raised, right? I mean, there was so much about how I was, um, you know, all the things that I observed in my lifetime. And I think each of us come to a place where we're thinking about being an entrepreneur or we're already an entrepreneur. And the reality is that, you know, regardless of, you know, when we've made that decision, our backgrounds and where we've come from and what we've observed in our life plays a part in how we see relationships and how we take information and feedback that's given to us, particularly if the feedback isn't, you know, isn't, affirm, um, isn't affirming, mm -hmm. right? Because they're going to say no, and they will. 
Um, and, and so there are some skills that, you know, we'll get into uh, in a little more detail uh, on our next podcast about specific things that, that I've done and, and are also um, as a result of this book to really help um, minimize it doesn't go away altogether, right? Because I'm human and every now and then, you know, no hurts. Um, but it, it, I'm recognizing more and more all the time that it's really not a reflection of me. Yes. And in terms of, uh, uh, I'm glad that we're talking about, we're talking about it, especially I see it manifesting uh, once you're giving someone feedback. And they take it very personal, so especially at work or somewhere. You see people getting really mad about it. Uh, yeah. What would be some of your, your advice to to someone who's struggling with uh, not taking it personal? You know, um, yeah. What would be some of the, the advice we give to them based on your experience? Uh, what would you say? Yeah. So um, when someone, because that's the thing, right? I mean, I just think about in the corporate environment, which I spent 20 years in, you know, we would have reviews. Um, and, and, you know, as a sales manager and, you know, a, a, a kind of head of my division, I, I was able to provide lots of feedback. Mm -hmm. And I think it's as much about the delivery of the information as it is about the person who's receiving the information. Um, and so in terms of the receiver of the information, when someone is providing you with input, it's very helpful um, if you've asked for that input, right? Okay. I think the hardest part about um, people uh, receiving a critique, if you will, or um, you know, that kind of feedback is when it's not asked for. Sometimes that's the most difficult. So one of the things that, that I've really learned in as being an entrepreneur and, and guiding a, a team of people, and now it's in nine countries, so we've expanded into two new countries, which is just absolutely a ball. We love it, um, is that I always ask for permission for feedback. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm not asking permission and I'm offering, um, not criticism, but I'm offering constructive support, that's what I refer to it as because I've been doing this a long time and, and I've stepped in a whole bunch of landmines along the way. And my role is really to just help people avoid those landmines. So the first thing I would suggest is to make sure and ask for permission anytime you are providing people with feedback. Because as long as you have that, then when you share it with them, you get, just gotta do it lovingly. Um, and just let them know that the reason that you're offering the feedback is because you want them to get better. As far as the receiver goes, a lot of times when someone receives bad news or they receive what they might choose to interpret as criticism and they mm -hmm. do take it personally, what it can mean is that that individual needs to do maybe a little more work on how they feel about them. Because if somebody really feels good about their value and their worth and who they are and how they show up and what they bring to whatever environment they happen to be in, constructive feedback is really for their benefit. It's not supposed to be harmful. And it's certainly not about trying to harm someone's feelings of themselves. Um, and so much of it, I, I do think, comes down to if I'm feeling really worthy and I'm feeling really good about who I am and the work that I'm doing and the mission that I'm on and the people that I'm helping, then whatever feedback comes my way, I have all of those things that I'm well grounded in and mm -hmm. I understand about who I am. So it, it doesn't have the same impact on me, if that makes sense. Yes, definitely. It makes sense. And in terms of giving feedback, as we, we're, we're in this, this uh, area of feedback, is there or have you ever encountered someone who gave you a feedback in a way that you didn't appreciate it? <laughs> is there a, what I'm trying to ask is, is there a bad way to give feedback? <laughs> You got That's a great question. Yes, and absolutely. I mean, and I think because I'm 56, right? So yes. a lot of the feedback that I received that was a lot harder to take and to handle was more in my 20s and 30s. But you know, it, so it, it, some of it had to do, I think, with with where I was at in my life. Um, but feedback that's not fun 
and can easily be adjusted is feedback that comes without an invitation. Okay. Because anytime you're offering feedback to somebody and the door is not open to receive that feedback, it's not going to be received very well. Likely. And, and how do you go about it? You ask the person, hey, can I give you some feedback? Uh, yes. Are you open to some feedback? Should, is that yes. the, the proper way to go about it? Well, that's how I have found um, a much better success in how it's received. So, mm -hmm. the, so the way I pose the question is exactly like you just suggested, because I'm asking them, would you be open to a suggestion or would you be open to some feedback? about whatever it is that you know we're in conversation about right like in some of my leadership team whom i just absolutely adore they are fantastic human beings and i'm so privileged to get to work with them every day um but sometimes when they're in conversation with some of the people that they're grooming and they're teaching and they're educating some of the approaches are, maybe aren't going to help get the kinds of results for their partners that they would like Mm -hmm. And so when they're doing role playing, as an example, with me, I'll always ask them, so would you be open to some feedback about that? And if, as long as I've asked it that way, then they know feedback's coming if they say yes. And they also know that if they say no, I'm not interested in that right now. That's good, too because okay. <laughs> they're not ready for it, right? Yes. And so that's the thing that's great is to be in a position where if they say, no, I am not really open to feedback right now, that we just move on. And, and you know, we, we go in another direction that can be supportive, but isn't about my providing feedback. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, that definitely, definitely uh, makes sense. <laughs> For those of you who are listening to us right now, we're going to take a little break and then we're going to come back with uh, Assumption and do your best in a little bit. So we've talked about the two important points as Beth outlined. So this will be the second part of our, our podcast. For those of you who are new or who are listening right now, make sure to share right now because we are getting into the second segment. Without further ado, here we go. Okay, I am back. Beth, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good, Flora. This is so fun. I really appreciate an opportunity to share this amazing book with uh, with your audience. And uh, the your questions are always so wonderful. You're welcome. So we've talked about the two uh, first point, right? We talk about being impeccable with your words and uh, uh, not taking things personal. And what would be the third, the third, the third point? Yeah, so the third one is don't make assumptions. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh my right? goodness. That's another one where <laughs> really get tripped up, right? Yes. I mean, it, it is amazing. I mean, especially with technology today, right? I mean, if somebody, you're texting somebody and they don't get back, right? And yes. you can make all kinds of stories up in your mind about why that's going on, right? Enough to just kind of make you crazy if you allow that to happen. And so, I mean, I'm just in a position now where if I don't hear back from someone or if I don't, um, you know, I, I, the communication is not what I'm accustomed to because immediate feedback is really what I strive for. Mm -hmm. So making assumptions about what is going on in people's lives and why they might not be responsive and all of those kinds of things, all they do is just muddle our minds. They really do. And it's true. And, you know, and I'll try to do this delicately. But, I mean, if you're making assumptions, you know what they've said, right? It makes an ASS out of you and me. And it's really true. <laughs> because so often I, in my past, have made assumptions about either people not responding or people choosing other things or, you know, which is their choice, their life, right? Um, it's And I'm making assumptions. So and for, that's the thing that's just so powerful about not doing that. And for the people who are wondering, uh, what would be your definition of assumption? For people who are hearing this word, like, I don't know what assumption means. What would be a short dis the de description or definition of assumption according to you? Yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, so an assumption is like saying, 
I know that somebody is thinking something or I know that somebody is going to be doing something. And, and the truth of the matter is, is that you are assuming they are going to. Then that may not be the case at all. So not knowing with certainty is the, is the tough thing about assumptions. And the only way to know with certainty about what's going on for another human being or an interaction with another human being is simply if you're asking those questions. Because as soon as you start assuming that they're going to do something or say something or be a certain way, first of all, it's not about us. It's about them. And if you're making those assumptions, 90% of the time, you're going to be wrong. Exactly. And that's when difficult communication begins to happen, right? <laughs> Is that I'm not going to make an assumption about what's going on in someone else's world. I'm going to ask those questions. And then I'll know. And until I know for certain, you know, I, I can make up all kinds of stories about that, but none of them will be true and it'll waste my time and theirs. Yes, yes I really love that we're talking about assumption. I, and one of the thoughts that came in my mind was about our relationship. You know, are we in relationship? People are together. And uh, assumption happens quite often. You know, you, you know, people think about, why would be you know, people, people try to uh, uh, struggle a little bit with assumption? They're trying to figure out what their partner might need or might not, and usually people tend to fail short with that. I've seen it uh, for myself, and I've been a victim of it as well. <laughs> and that's when I, I learned that the best way is just asking questions. And uh, I remember sometime I would go on, on dates, and I'm like, listen, I'm going to ask you a lot of questions because I know nothing about what you like, you know. And, and it's been very a switch in my mind to be able to, to be that way and asking questions every single time. And sometimes I check myself on that, you know. Uh, so, so that I know exactly what I am here for and what I, what I want, or if the person are here for the long term, the short term, I want to know now before making any, any further decision. So in terms of relationship, uh, you know, uh, and as, as people, how, how does assumption fit in it? Or would you say it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's problematic or, you know, the approach of questioning the partner, is it a good way? Because some, some of the things I've seen is that people are, you know, afraid. You know, they're like, you know, I just know this person. I'm not, I don't want to come too, too, uh, too picky or too, too, you know, I forget the, the, the term. Uh, but often I see people are afraid of that. That's why they want to just go with the flow. So what are some of the points or some of the advice you give to people who find themselves in those relation in a relationship where uh, there is a lot of assumption, or they're asking themselves, should I assume something, or should I just, you know, ask question ask if it was an interview? Right? <laughs> yeah, well, I'll tell you, yeah. and and you know this, Gloria. I mean, I've been married thirty six years, yes. and you know, there's a lot of times when my husband and I look at each other and go, "How have we managed that?" Right? <laughs> there are definitely times, even after being together so mm -hmm. long, um, where we both make assumptions, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so we're always working on, you know, how do we ask ourselves and each other better questions so that we avoid that? Because so much conflict can come up pretty easily in any relationship when there are unstated assumptions that others are making. Assumptions are, you know, they, they're dangerous, you know? I mean, they are really dangerous because so often they're wrong. And so in terms of um, advice or, or counsel, you know, and, and in terms of relationships, I, I guess I do feel a little qualified to be able to <laughs> approach this because, you know, there have been times in, in our marriage that, you know, I mean, it, we really looked at each other and went, what are we doing here, right? Um, and ultimately what it really came down to is recognizing that we share very common values. And, you know, share two beautiful children and those kinds of things as well. And even then, sometimes that's not enough. And, you know, lots of people end up, you know, in a divorce because they, they never really clarified what it was that that person needed in the relationship in order to experience joy. And that's really, you know, the whole purpose of this podcast, right? It, exactly. It's to be able to 
inspire people and to be able to help them guide their lives in a way that, you know, they can come out the other end of it and go, wow, that, that was really fun, right? That was really cool. Got some good tips. So I think, as you said, the way to really undo assumptions in any relationship, particularly in a dating relationship. Oh my goodness, I can't even imagine how hard that would be right now. <laughs> you're doing it online and you don't really have an opportunity to be in person. And so how would that work? You exactly. Know? Yeah. So I think your approach of being able to ask a lot of questions, if, if it can be positioned to a potential partner, that the reason I'm asking these questions is not to be annoying. Right. I, I'm not I'm not trying to drill you here. I'm not trying to <laughs> it's not like 20 questions, you know, yes. what it is, is you care mm -hmm. so much about being in alignment early on in a relationship that you're willing to take the risk of asking those kinds of questions, because that's the truth of that. That's a very powerful position that you're in when you're asking that kind of quality questions of someone that you don't want to waste their time if there's not enough in alignment and they don't want to waste yours, right? Because life is short, right? I mean, finding somebody that is a really good match takes the willingness to be a little risky and, and ask those kinds of tough questions, but better up front, right? When you're building a foundation of trust together. So I just applaud you for doing that. I think that's fantastic. And I completely agree that that's the way to go about it. I'm just saying. Sounds good. For, for those of you listening or single, there you have it. You know? <laughs> Ask as no many questions as you can. <laughs> Don't assume in anything, you know? Uh, no, because, ask away. because I remember, uh, I remember uh, one of those times I was, I was on a date and I was like, uh, I, I, I thought, you know, the, the, the person... Uh, favorite color would be pink and I was wrong <laughs> and I'm glad I asked because like hey, you know what's your favorite color and it was like oh I'm like oh okay so asking is always the way to go and uh, you know that's a, a great a great a great point there so now we're moving on our four uh, our four uh, agreement so we talked about the first one we talked about the second one the third one so what is it the fourth one Fourth one is to do your best, mm -hmm. your best at all times, right? And, and sometimes like when my husband and I got COVID, my best sucked. Just going to say, mm -hmm. right? I could hardly get my buns out of bed. I mean, and it was very short lived. And, and I know that the nutrition that I fuel my body with and his body with, we were able to recover very rapidly, which was really amazing. And we're so grateful. So that's the low end of what being my best was going to look like. Right. Um, yes. But it's so it changes. It fluctuates. The ability to bring the best version of you forward mm -hmm. in every encounter that you have with a human being, and particularly when you're an entrepreneur, because they're depending on you to show up to be your very best. And it also is totally understandable because I've shared this with a number of people that I currently work with. I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm working and I'm, I'm catching back up for being kind of out of commission for a couple of weeks and it, you know, I'm finding my rhythm. Um, and, and so just asking for that permission and understanding that sometimes my best is sort of off the charts best. And other times my best is not off the charts. Mm -hmm. It's, it's just the best that it can be in every situation and in every encounter at that time. Yes. And that's the thing that's cool. I have a quick question, uh, not to catch you off. I have a quick question no, 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 it's great. Uh, Go ahead. For, for the people who are, uh, who are, as we're talking about doing your best for the people who are already giving everything they've got and they face enormous adversity and in those moments they, they feel like they want to quit they want to just give up in those moments and what what would you advise them what would you tell them they're, they're already telling themselves i already gave you everything i've got <laughs> you know because life sometimes can be very tricky at the same time and to those people who are who are facing those adversity what would be your advice yeah, and it's so true. You know, I mean, here I am on Hawaii, right? I'm on Maui. 
Um, we're here for a while and we're very, very blessed to be able to work remotely, both of our careers. And the people on Maui, vast majority of them, um, work two jobs, mm -hmm. minimum, mostly three. And, and the most of the employment here is as a result of tourism, which has been almost negative. I mean, some of the occupancy rates um, on Maui alone have just been staggeringly challenging. So I'm running into people all day long, every day who are wondering exactly what you asked about. How can I possibly be my best when I am drowning in debt, when I'm having a hard time finding and buying food for my family mm -hmm. and I'm having a hard time paying my rent. So I totally understand your question. And it's a really good one because the reality is in that situation, your best may just be to get out of bed, continue to love on your family and continue to have hope. That may be your best because there is always hope. There is always an answer to prayer. There is, there uh, is going to be a way out of whatever is, you know, challenging to people, mm -hmm. a way through it. And, you know, that's the only thing I can suggest is just the confidence in knowing that it, it is going to be okay. Exactly. That reminds me of one of uh, this quote that I read somewhere. Uh, I was on a Lisbon book. He said, the only think you can do once you give it all that you can do you know that's you know if you're sure that you give it everything that you can do all you can do is to do all you can do <laughs> you yeah. know you yeah. already did it so keep doing it it keep is it's best. really true I, I i'm incredibly blessed um, my husband and i just recently were on, in an uber drive um, from the airport to where we went to go um, rent our bicycles because while we're here, we don't rent a car. And so we, we, cause we just love to bike and we love to be in the community as an, and a part of this wonderful community in Kihei. And um, so our Uber driver picked us up wonderful, kind man who, you know, lost his job in March has been unemployed. His wife works part-time at Costco. They have two teenage children. It's been hard. I mean, it's been really hard and to be able to just, you know, love on him and give him hope and let him know that when you are really struggling with, I don't have another stream of income and I don't know how to build a business. I don't know how to do a brick and mortar. I don't want to spend a whole bunch of money because I don't have a whole bunch of money right now to invest in a business. I was able to, to give him a lifeline and to say, look, I can help you build an online business from home, a global one at that can touch 24 countries all over the world. And he and his wife, his lovely wife, Rachel, we now have an opportunity to work with one another to help them develop a college fund for their son, to be able to pay their rent, to be able to have a business of their own that is their own. They're building their own economy. So again, I mean, I think it just really comes down to there's always going to be something that is going to come along as long as you're open to possibilities. Exactly. So the quote was, all you can do is all you can do, but make sure to do all that you can do. So I for the it. for the people who are out there who are seeking for opportunity, they're like, you know what, I have not been... I haven't been giving my best, you know, for people out there who are honest with themselves, who are able to call out upon themselves. They're like, you know, I really want to give the best, you know, but I've been giving a little bit here and there, you know, trying things here and there, but I haven't put my whole soul in it. Like the, the president said last time on his inauguration, I put my whole, my entire soul into this. So for the people who want to give their best, you know, they're not 
are there yet? They are, you know, they're looking for ways to, to improve themselves, to increase their performances, to increase their wealth or increase their net worth. What would be some of your advice uh, for the people who are out there who want to make more, who want to give more, who want to do more? What would you give them as advice in this moment? Oh, well, I'll tell you, that's a great question, Gloria, because there are so many people in our country right now who are kind of paralyzed, mm -hmm. right? They, they, they know that they want to do something. They just don't know what, because it comes back to the first topic that we talked about, right? The trust factor. I don't know who to trust. I don't know who to you know, go, turn to. I, I don't know if I could even build an online business from home. I, I, I just, so... Fear is the thing that keeps so many people from their very best. And so what I would suggest is I've actually written an ebook that um, has 10 things to ask for, to look for. If you're interested in building a global online business from home, and you don't even know what questions to ask yet, right? I mean, I'm a heart attack survivor. And I, at, at first, I mean, I had a cardiologist that was speaking to me not um, respecting the fact that I was female, to be quite honest. Um, but I, so I didn't even know what questions to ask. And sometimes that's what gets in our way too. It's like, I know I want something else. I know I want something more, but I don't know what questions to ask. And if you don't even know what questions to ask, then you really can feel stuck. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I have I've built this ebook and it's 10 different questions, specific questions to ask, to think about before you even consider looking at an online business. So I want to make sure that anybody who would like to get a copy of that ebook, um, I found it to be incredibly helpful and very empowering to people. So, you know, we can make sure and um, anybody who would like to have access to it, just reach out to Glory or reach out to me and I'd be happy to, to share that with you because I know you would find it to be very grounding um, and very informative. Definitely. Uh, this was an amazing, an amazing chat. Uh, Beth, do you have any last thoughts or any uh, area that you'd like to, to speak about? Uh, and also, I would like to give you an opportunity to also tell us a little bit about, about your business and how you, you help people who want to start an online business. And if you can tell us a little bit about that, that would be great. Sure. Absolutely. Thank you, Glory. Um, so I, I would say that just in terms of closing thoughts, if you are an entrepreneur or if you're considering being an entrepreneur, I found the book called The Four Agreements incredibly helpful. I've read it many times um, and it was actually introduced to, uh, to me from another entrepreneur. So um, if that would be one of the first things I would encourage you to do. It's available on Audible. It's available in hard copy. I'm, I'm kind of a hard copy happy old fashioned girl in a way because I like to have it in my hands and turn the pages and dog ear and highlight, which the entire book is mostly highlighted because it's just so awesome. Um, but the, the author is Don Miguel Ruiz. So just to look for the four agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. Um, and then the other thing that I, I'm just so thrilled to have a chance to share with each and every one of you is that if you are thinking about building an online business from home, don't be afraid to do that because it is so much fun, particularly if you're in an environment where you know you are giving to people. You have a purpose. And my purpose is twofold. My purpose is to help as many people as possible earn another $10,000 in the next 90 days. Now, it does vary based on effort, based on time, all of those kinds of things, but it is possible. That's $3,000 a month. Now, in order to do that, you would need to be passionate about preventative health care, passionate about nutrition, passionate about taking care of the one and only body that we each get and need to be able to thrive in long term. Um, but I know how to do that. Our team knows how to do that. We know how to help people with a very specific guide, very specific step-by-step -step process that can provide hope, that can provide you and your family, if that happens to be your case. If you're somebody that's rocking the single world, no problem, of the ability to have more things in your control. 
it's a really big deal, especially right now when so many things can feel out of your control. So that's what I'd love for you to be able to be comfortable reaching out to me, ask questions that you might have about it. Easiest way to reach me is by email, which is e.fasca at comcast.net. My last name is spelled B-A-S as in Sam, K-A. My cell phone number is 206-459-2854. I am crazy about texting, so I would be happy to be very responsive to you. Um, and, you know, masterthenewway.com is our website. And, Gloria, I don't know if you still might have that available, but maybe you could uh, just show the, the masthead of our website. Oh, yes, absolutely. I do have the website right Thank here. You. That's the moment. Let me put it up. There you go. Master the new way. Perfect. Yep. There it is. Um, so really our entire intent is to help people do exactly that. Master a new way. A new way of thinking about how to leverage money. A new way of thinking about how to build an online business from home. A new way of thinking about your relationship with food. A new way of thinking about how to set your family financially free. And when you surround yourself with a community of people who really understand how to teach you how to do that, oh my gosh, it's magical. And we would just love to hear from you and um, have an opportunity to be of service to you. Exactly. Uh, for those of you who are really interested to take on this uh, opportunity with Beth, I would recommend going to uh, Master the New Way. Uh, or you can reach out to Beth on Facebook group at Team Dream Extreme. Or you can text her in her phone number as she gave it to us in this podcast. Uh, for those of you who are here who have questions still, you can always drop it down or you can, you know, send it to us at uh, support at rankadvertiser.com. Uh, that's also a way where we'll be available to you and answer any question that you might have. And for those of you who have been listening, I would say thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for being here. And this has been our episode where we talked a bit about the four agreement. So, Beth, thank you so much for blessing us today with, uh, with your presence. I really appreciate it. And, um, yes, that's a little bit about it for today. And thank hey, you very much, Thank Beth. you so much. All right. Talk to you later. Thank you, Glory. You are welcome. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for listening. That was our talk in terms of the four agreement with Beth. This was an amazing episode. And for those of you who are out there who want to reach out to Beth, make sure to go at masterthenewway.com. Or you can reach out to her on Facebook via Team Dream Extreme. So... Thank you so much for listening. This has been Glory, your host at Rank Advertiser Podcast. I'll talk to you soon.